Hello everybody, welcome to Dick Tunes. Now, for those of you who are not aware, I'm sure most of you are, but just for the sake of it, just to get this out of the way, because it's the internet and people don't pay attention and you're probably asleep, you don't know what's going on. This channel is, um, I decided not to set up your basic standard beta channel uh, when I rebooted myself on line this is a second channel but it's not a second channel. look at it as a second main channel because this is not going to be a place where i upload sort of videos of a lesser you know with less production or less fucking effort put into them which is what most fucking secondary channels are um this is not going to be like coffin triple zero was to coffin 616 this is basically going to, i'm going to carry on just using the main channel as it is uh uploading a couple of old videos doing a new one uploading a couple of old ones i'm up to 50 right, it's been two months less than two months 50 videos we're going strong now this one, um, this channel, this video might go on, I don't know how long it's going to be, but I please, one thing's very important for this one, I need feedback, I need to hear, I need to know, because I don't want to sit here, because uh, like one thing I can't stand is when you make a video, like, you know, this, and this may go on for I don't know how long, uh, but I'm trying to sort of, I'll try and make it as concise as possible, but is when I make a video like this, and people just sort of, say, and it gets very few comments, it gets views, it gets people rating it, but there's no sort of, and because what this ultimately is going to be is, this isn't a place where I'm going to be able to teach you anything in terms of um, how to be, how to use the animation software, how, what to do to, you know, any tips or advice, because I don't know what I'm fucking doing. Um, if you want to, however, I will fucking recommend some people for you. Uh, there's a channel called Incredible Tutorials, who have a website called IncredibleTutorials.com, and they basically, the software I'm using, they have a, you know, comprehensive, to say comprehensive, this playlist, I think it's 13 fucking hours, uh, when I watched it in its first go, you know, it's, it's, you know, it, it, it gives you everything, there's no, nothing you can sit there and go, uh, it, because uh, a lot of them, a lot, one thing I've learned is a lot of people, they do these animation tutorials so, for these software, and they talk, they do it as if they assume everyone's sort of on, on the same level as them. Um, now the idea for this, I'm gonna this this video. I'm not gonna really show you anything in terms of. I will show you a couple of pictures, images. This is really to sort of tell you where this idea came about because this is quite a while in the making. Um, last year, uh, I think it would be around June or July last year, I was doing my favourite thing that I do when I can't sleep and I'm bored, um, and I want to annoy someone. I go on Twitter and I find someone to annoy. I say someone. It's usually Donald Trump. Um, and um, those of you who've ever seen me in one of my sort of tirades, I go on late at night sometimes. Uh, it's that that was what I was doing. But I, I ended up there was a, I don't know whether this hashtag was something I thought of or it's something that I had seen. But there was a hashtag that I started using called called uh, made up facts about Muslims um, as a sort of way, just trying to sort of stir up some trouble with the idea. It was I think deep down I'm trying to re I'm trying to you know maybe see if I can just. Do another creeping Sharia, uh, uh, met, you know, sort of insanity. But I think that was a one-off. Um, but I ended up doing this thing, and it was fake facts about Muslims, and some of them were quite funny. I was getting lots of retweets, and um, I sat there and thought, "These, there's a lot of stuff here." And I ended up doing about twenty or thirty of them, and I thought, "It's quite good." And I thought, "When if I'm gonna, if these things, I shouldn't just waste this on Twitter." So I started writing down some of the better ones. Um, and you'll recognise some of them um, if you've seen the uh, video that I'm going to be linking to. I'm linking to, to down um, down in the description box. And it was things like uh, it was things like uh, you know Muslims. Uh, the the Muslim uh, Islamification has got to such an extent that in some areas in the West, you know, mus there are more Muslims than uh, Muslims outnumber eyebrows three to one. Um, various things uh, like that. There were just all these made up things and. Um, I, I decided that this is quite funny. So originally, I wrote down all the better ones, thought of some more ones, and the idea was I was going to do like a sort of Fox News style thing. And I sat there and thought, well, I could, but it's a little bit. It's that's been done quite a bit, and I don't want to sort of end up looking like a second-rate version of the day-to-day, -day, which is the best news satire ever been ever done ever. Or I don't want to end up looking like a sort of second-rate Colbert. So I thought, what else can I do with this? And I have no idea how I managed to ha manage to. Uh, how I ended up here, but the next day I ended up doing this video um, uh, that was uploaded on the Coffin Triple Zero channel. I'll link to below. It's currently on the Dick Dynasty channel, and it was called "Islam Will Own Scotland," or "Islam Owns Scotland," or something like that. And I basically played a Scottish guy called Big Willie McClafferty, who was uh, who is the 
uh, leader of the Scottish Defence League purely on the basis that he's the only member of the Scottish Defence League left. And um, t take this from me, you know, I live in Scotland, right? The, the Scottish Defence League, I, it, it's laughable they call it a league, right? The Black Panthers could fucking outnumber these motherfuckers, right? And, um, and, um, and I, I don't know why I did it. I think I just, there was something about, I've always liked the Scottish accent to use in comedy, various comedy ways. I, you know, I grew, Billy Connolly was like the first real the comedian I got into when I was nine. And um, and I just always found his voice, fun, and I've just always found it a good accent, particularly when you're playing certain, and there were certain things that just sounded funnier. Um, one of my favorite lines in the video that people always bring up was when I sort of talk about how Muslims breed ferociously, they breed, it's like someone chucks a, chucked a mogwai into a monsoon. The worst thing about these bastards is not only are they invisible, but they breed ferociously. You just see them, it's just like pop, pop, but you two people go into a fucking building and fucking hundreds come out. It's like someone's chucked a fucking mogwai into a monsoon. Like, and it just sounds funnier, and people always sort of bring that up. Um, and uh, it was really popular, and people sort of liked it. And I thought, well, let's, can I do something else with this? There seems to be something here. And seeing as I, uh, how I've probably done more videos on the English Defence League and English Defence League-esque organisations in my time on YouTube than anything else, um, I figured there's probably something else I can do with this. Um, so what could I do? And uh, I, I, this, I don't know how I came up with this, but I ended up sitting up and uh, thought, well, what if I did another video as Big Willy? But I thought, what can I do? And then I thought, what if I did something that was more like a sketch? And then I brought in uh, a new character. That character being would then ultimately be uh, Tommy Robinson. Or it would be Tommy, as he's just simply referred to, uh, you know, in, for the purposes of me not wanting to get sued. Not that Tommy Robinson would get much out of me. Um, and he's in prison at the moment, so fuck him. Um, please do, fuck him, if he's, in, if he's there. Um, he'd have to be on a stall. But basically, so... Now, the, obviously... I couldn't make this, uh, whatever I wanted to do, I couldn't do something with Tommy and a, another character with another person. Um, you know, Sir Gaston, the days of Nazis without aptitude have been and gone, I'm afraid, folks. There's never going to be another one. Maybe bring it back at some point for a reunion. But basically, there's, there's, you know, John is married, he's got a dog, he's got grey hair, his knee's knackered, he's married, you know. Um, so he's, and he lives miles away, so I barely see him. Um, so don't ever expect that. But basically, I, and I thought, what I can do here is I, I need to create some sort of uh, dynamic, duo-dynamic. And I came up with the idea of basically, what if I had, what if I was Big Willie McClafferty and I had Tommy Robinson, you know, as my, as my sort of, uh, but he was an animated cartoon. But he was a sort of animation. Not even a fucking good one, just a basic animation, something, or, something I could bounce off and I could do the voice for Tommy. And um, I was talking about this to, to, um, to uh, the user Ominous Voice, who, if you remember, if you've been around for a while, you may remember me and him used to do a channel together called the Rob Child Channel, which is still up, by the way. It's just, it hasn't been, no, no, it hasn't been logged into for three years, but the video's still up there. And, um, and, so, and, so, and I tend to sort of riff off well with Rob. And we ended up, I ended up with this, sort of coming up with this idea of, like, what if it was, like, uh, a sort of animation which Rob can do, um, an animation. I will come up with what I, what the idea was, and uh, and I would get, basically give it to him. He can do the animation. And it wasn't at that time. It wasn't even animation. It was just literally like a sort of comic book um, se se sequence of pictures. Um, it was very very simplistic and basic, but it, it didn't have to be complex. And I would be Big Willie McClafferty in real life, you know, in like you know as as myself. Um, the problem was at the time for various reasons I won't go into. Rob basically didn't have the time, you know, available, uh, was not able to uh, do this. And uh, this went on for, this was annoying because it was like, I couldn't do this, this is something I could not do without this, uh, these, these cartoons or this animation. This had to happen, there's no other way I could do it. And, you know, the fact is Rob's better at drawing than me. However, Rob did come up with one thing, the one thing Rob did come up with before, like, you know, he was able to do anything was the first drawing of the first character. Now, I'm, I'm using this new editing thing, so I'm probably going to have a picture floating around somewhere here or here. And it's going to be, that is the original drawing of Tommy. Um, as you can see, it's basically, you know, you can tell it's, it looks a little bit Terence and Philippish, um, obviously, but that is basically Tommy, little Tom, no, Tommy, and uh, he's wearing a Superman outfit purely because that's the kind of, you know, he, he's very obviously 
overly he's a very obviously a beta male trying to compensate and so he has this little superman outfit with his t on it um and we had came up with this idea of like because tommy robinson's very short and people like making fun of it and i figured why not take it to its ridiculous extreme so in this so in this cartoon, Tommy Robinson isn't just short, he's literally about two foot tall. He is like this bit. He could sit on my shoulder like this. And the idea was I could, that that could be a potential thing, because that would make it easier for me as the real-life character as, you know, as, you know, to interact with, because you can just have him there. So, and the idea was he would be like, he'd hide in my beard, he'd be able to sit on my head. You know, and he, there would be no sort of, I wouldn't be too fussy about keeping things proportion, in portion, proportion. Like if he, if he was... If he looked bigger in one in one scene than another, it wouldn't matter. But the ultimate idea was literally it's going to be very simplistic. The the video would be me looking at the camera as I do now, with may, with a different background depending on where I am, whether I was indoors or I was in like I was out out in a wooded area, or I was out by a building, or I was out in or I was out walking. And Tommy would be opposite me. And the great thing about that was the idea was it it allowed me to be able to create this uh, th create things happening behind Tommy that were really really simple. And, but the idea was, what do I do with this? Now, the whole point, what I ultimately came up with was, because of the, I thought, rather than um, sort of trying to make everyone go for the obvious uh, point here, go for the obvious sort of angle, I thought, let's do it, let's do it in the way I, you would least suspect me to do, which is to actually do it from the perspective where the English Defence League, the, you know, anti-Muslim, the extreme anti-Islamic nutters, like the Gellers, the um, the EDLs, the uh, BMPs, the the Condells, all, all these fucktards, um, the Robert Spencers, these fuckers were actually not just right; they were actually underestimated how bad things got. And so, because T Big Willie McClafferty in his, in the video um, resigns as SDL leader, that ultimately means the Scottish Defence League no longer exists. And because it no longer exists, that meant the Muslims could now. Uh, rise up and take over Scotland. Now you may remember. I don't know if anyone. Now some of you may or may not have se may not have seen this. Um, but uh, back earlier this year, I uploaded what was called the Rise of Muslim Shire, which was a sort of four and a half minute sort of trailer. It, it was, but I basically uploaded it as a trailer um, uh, for, uh, for for this idea. And it was it was like, I, and I don't have a copy of it. I can't find one. It may be on the my old Toshiba, but I can't find a fucking copy of it anywhere. If anyone's got a copy of it, then please do send it to me, because I'd like to re-upload it. But it was really, really out of, it was really, really over the top. I mean, it basically, I, I took clips from World War Z, Dread, uh, Walking Dead, Dawn of the Dead, um, just like, and the idea was that basically, um, the second the Scottish Defence League had folded, um, the Muslims would then begin the Islamification, and, uh, to, and, and to a ridiculous extent, to the point where, like, Everything they predicted, like if you take the most extreme, paranoid, insane conspiracy theory about Muslims taking over the country, it was nothing. And basically, within a matter of days, Muslims had infested Scotland to a ratio of 500 million. Right? There were five, so Scotland had gone for, and very few Scottish people had escaped. Most of them were, you know, sort of, you know, uh, ground up into halal kebab meat. They were bum raped or ever beheaded, what, what have you. You know, um, to, you know, made into fetching hats. Um, but there was a number of, there was only a few hundred, there was like just over a thousand of them that had escaped. Uh, and they all had to end up in Glasgow. Now, Glasgow is the only area of Scotland that Muslims cannot tread um, because the sort of natural violent tendencies that exist within your average Glaswegian cannot be combined with the natural violent tendencies that you would have in your average Muslim. And if you did, Muslims would start being able to commit suicide bombing purely through spontaneous combustion. The amount of anger and rage would just be too much. So that was basically the idea. So you end up, and what would ultimately happen is when this, uh, when, when the whole program starts, it starts six months after that's all occurred. And basically the, they built up all these walls around, even though the Muslims cannot, in, get onto the Glaswegian land. They build all these walls to protect themselves because obviously they can still throw stuff. They can do anything. So they've got these big walls that go around Glasgow, and that is basically uh, where the few, um, the few like just over uh, thirteen hundred or so Scottish people uh, now remain. Um, 
Uh, now, uh, it, you don't, and you don't have to be able to sort of know anything about Glasgow. It's basically just going to be. It, it was. There's going to be very, very sort of. It's going to feel very closed in. There's not going to be a lot of characters. Was not going to be a lot of characters to it. It was going to be very simplistic. It was literally going to be at the start, big, uh, big Willie and Tommy. Um, but at the time, it had taken so long for me to sort of. To, to, I'd given up on Rob being able to do the animation and that trailer. That Muslim Shire trailer was originally meant to be an intro to what was going to be the fucking one sketch that I did, and in the time that I was sat there, um, basically not being able to get the animation done or get the original thing, I ended up writing more. And I thought, well, there's a lot more to this. This is you know, there's there's a lot of good ideas there. And obviously, because I've spent so long dealing with these fuckers, you know, I've got an awful lot of you know innate knowledge and the understanding of them that I don't really need that you know there's so much stuff there I can I can do to create and I think I think this is something that based on if you know if you know my content and what I've done this is an idea that really sort of works for you know the the sort of stuff I've been doing um and then I thought and then I got to the point I was like I've got so many good ideas here and I used to sit I'd sit there and I'd run them off Rob and I thought I want to do this I've I, you know I want to do this but I can't you know it can't be done without and I and finally that I had that little shining moment where I sat there and thought look why don't you just do it your fucking self and I thought well there's two problems here I can't really draw um I've certainly you know and and I've, I've never drawn when I was a kid I was into I wanted to be in animation but I don't have my problem has always been I don't have I like drawing I like cartoons I don't have the fucking attention span you know um I'm good at writing jokes because they take don't take very long I'm good at writing YouTube videos. They don't generally take very long. I'm good at sitting on a live feed for 12 hours without fucking any script or direction because you don't, you just do what, uh, whatever happens. You know? And the internet, unfortunately, is not a place where your attention span gets any sort of exercise. So, uh, but I sat there and thought, well, I've got an animation program. Uh, it, someone bought, it, it, I think it was bought for me as a, birth, as a birthday present like a year ago. And I... Had never ever I, I'd, pl I'd put it in and I saw it, but I'd never really had the urge to do it. I thought, well, I, when it comes around to me you, wanting to use it, I want it, I'll plug it in. Now the anime, the studio, the, the so software I had was called Anime Studio Seven Debut, which is the debut is the beginner's version, um, and it was number seven. Uh, and I thought, well, let's give this a fucking go. Um, maybe I can do it myself. Um, obviously, you know, being realistic, thinking, well, you know, this could take so fucking long by the time this is by the time i've got this done there's going to be this is going to be a dead issue you know no one's going to care um but then i thought fuck it let's just see what i can do let's see if i can have a go at it um and um and then i so i got the software i put it on and um i'll say this i i'm sure if you're an animator or you're someone who's used animation software or, you know you've probably you you probably i now realize you know hate it when you hear people sp you know talk and, and assume that Computers and this kind of software program has made animation too easy, and it's made it so much easier than in the old days when they used to draw. They had to draw every single fucking right. And I, I used to think like that. You know, I was one of those anti, you know, uh, computer animation software bigots. And I now realise what a fucking, you know, how wrong I was. And I, I swear to you, if I ever hear anyone say that, I will kick them in the crotch as hard as I fucking can. Um. It's really, re I mean, I didn't realise it would be this complicated when I got the programme. You know, I watched, you know, I, I wanted to take it seriously. I watched all the playlists. I didn't fuck around, right? This is one thing I'm going to have to emphasise. Please be patient with me, right? Because I really, really sort of like, this is, I'm not someone who's like been doing graphic design and now wants to try animation and wants to see if I can go. I'm someone who doesn't fucking do graphic design. I don't draw. You know, I'm the kind of guy who would sit there trying to draw something on Microsoft Paint, you know, on the old, like, you know, 15 years ago when you had one computer and it was diesel powered. And then you sit there and you try and draw something and you go, oh, fuck this. You know, etch a sketch is a good example. You have to be patient with an etch a sketch and I'll be the kind of try and draw, oh, fuck this. You know, I was a Magna Doodle kid, you know, not free. And um, so I thought, it's going to take me a while to get this right. And um, the first thing I thought I'd try and do is like, don't try and push it. Like this is gonna. I'm gonna try and keep it simple. You know, I'm looking at it from the perspective of South Park is a good example. That's a, a cartoon. It's one of the, probably the greatest, in my opinion, the greatest cartoon series ever in terms of consistency, in and how quickly and the fact that it's so simple. It doesn't need to be flash. And um, Anime Studio Seven. I'm not going to show you anything now. I will uh, in later videos. You know, show you because like, there's no point at the moment uh, because I'm still trying to get used to it and I want to be confident in it before I do, before I sort of, 
hook it up because I'd be here for fucking hours wasting your time. You're just gonna see you're gonna see a man swearing at his computer trying to draw a circle because uh, he's forgotten how to do it all. Um, but I, d I will leave links to the um, to the website where you can buy this program. I do recommend if you're someone who's a beginner and you want to give it a go. It's e it's quite inexpensive. I mean, it's like fifty dollars uh, to download, and that's you know, and and I'm actually on. Anime Studio 9.5 at the moment because someone very kindly offered to upgrade me and it was like $20 to upgrade which is like 11 quid over here. Um, I did also intend to use Crazy Talk. Uh, Crazy Talk is a software program that I've had for a long time but I tend really just like fucking about with and I've never really come up with a great idea to actually use it. Um, Crazy Talk for those who don't know is just basically the sort of an animation program where you take a picture like you could take a, fr a frame of me here and then you animate my face, and you can get me to sort of speak, and you, it has automatic lip syncing. So you can then sit there, and you can change the facial expressions. So, you know, it, it, and uh, to be honest, I could probably get myself in a lot of trouble uh, quite easily by sort of taking certain YouTubers and having them say certain things that I wanted them to say. But I, um, that was, I was spared that. I, I seem to be getting enough trouble as easily enough as it is without trying these days. So... Um, the first, but the, the one thing I'm going to show you is I did is Big Willie McClafferty. I then decided that I think I would rather do this as an animation straight through. I think it's going to be too complex, and also ultimately I don't look like the guy who Big Willie McClafferty would be. Big Willie McClafferty would be not a cliche or a stereotype, typical Scotsman, but he would be a guy who would have to be big. He would have to be imposing, and I simply am not, because he has to counter Tommy, who's like his side, who's like not his sidekick as such, but Tommy is basically, you know, the the other man in this sort of comedy duo. And so this was alt this was the first one I came up with, um, which I'm quite happy with. I wanted I've, I I I'm contemplating whether or not to give him hair. I do have a joke that requires him to be bald, however. Um, uh, so I don't, I can't, I, I, I'm not sure whether I'll give him hair. But then I sort of decided to change the beard because I thought that looked too, it looked too silly. Um, and also, I'm gonna make it clear, I'm not, I'm trying to avoid stereotypes of obviousness. I'm not gonna have things like lots of Braveheart references. I'm not gonna have things to, you know, obvious Scottish fucking whimsical, whimsical fucking, uh, you know, uh, stereotypes and cliches that have been done to death. Um, not that there's not gonna be homages or you know references. Uh, to things uh, that I want to. Uh, certainly there's going to be like certain characters I'm going to try. I'm going to try and do certain like wrestlers who I want to be sort of appear in the Muslim uh, area. Uh, and um, like the the Wyatt family or something like that. And I want to have like random... I also want to have people like Condell and uh, Thunderfoots, you know, sort of turn up to fight on the... to be on the side of uh, the other. So I'm going to have to, look to, to design them as well. Or, or people who maybe, you know, just happen to have names similar and... Uh, Voices that sound like them, just to, again, avoid getting in trouble. Um, the other character I've got, and this character, however, is a one that, wouldn't, uh, that won't appear in the show as, as a regular character, and it's this guy. And as you can see, it's obviously this is one of the Muslim characters. This is the main Muslim character. And uh, spoiler alert, uh, the whole point, this is a mythical Islamic... Um, this is a Muslim that has basically been written about, but no one has ever seen. No one's sure whether he actually exists. There have been sightings. And he's called Mohammed Derat, uh, or Mo Derat. Moderate, when you write it down. He's the, moder he's mo he's the moderate Muslim. He's the mythical, you know, you know, mystical fucking being that nobody's ever fucking encountered or heard of. And he is essential for them to try and basically uh, get all the Muslims who are now invested in Scotland to sort of re regress back. Um, the only other, Now, currently I'm in the process of trying to sort of recreate the Tommy Robinson animation on the software because I can't use that one. Um, it's complicated because of the way the software works. I wouldn't be able to anim animate that. Uh, but initially what I'm going to be doing is rather than try and attempt to do a whole episode, which was my initial plan, but far too ambitious, uh, given how just fucking long it's taken now to get to this point. So the idea was I'm going to do little vignettes, like maybe 30 second, 45 second sketches involving the characters. It may be, it may not even have them fully. It might just be their head. Uh, I'm also not going to go into too much fucking, I'm not going to try too hard to have the mouths go, doing all the different movies. It's just going to be, uh, it's going to be very sort of open. You know, I'll have them maybe frowning, you know, or maybe their eyes bulge out, their arms will move. It's going to be very simple. Um, Right, so don't expect that. You know, don't expect me to fucking just be whacking out Frozen or Watership Down. In in, it's not going to fucking happen. Um, 
so yeah you're going to have to so it's going to be very simple but as it progresses basically by doing these little vignettes that are going to be no more than 30 seconds to a minute long i can introduce various characters um there are three other characters but i haven't even designed them yet so i'll wait um but basically this is what i've got so far i've got tommy i've got big william mclafferty and i've got mohammed Dulat, the moderate muslim and um uh, this is all basically, you know, if you're someone who, I'm, I'm, I want to make this clear, I want to make sure, I still want to make sure that I do, the, the animation is done ultimately by me. However, there are certain things that I'm, I really can't be asked to do. Uh, one of them is I need a theme song. Now, I've got lyrics and I want it to be a sort of, um, it's like, I want it to be like a sort of old Scottish folk song. Um, you know, in that style. But I need a tune and uh, I've written some lyrics down for it. Um, but that's basically the new Scottish national anthem, which is uh, which is what what basically it's called new. It's called Muslim Shire is not the name of Scotland. Muslim Shire is what the uh, is what Big Willie decides as the leader of this of this gang to call the um, what what you know the area that used to be Glasgow, and he does it because you know it's like you know this is what we are you know there's Muk Shire and Muslim in the middle, and we've got to get you know that's we've got to be able to it's symbolic. You know what I'm fucking mean. But the whole, that's the whole idea, is uh, basically, Tommy turns up, I won't tell you how, because it's a long story and I don't want to give away too much stuff. I, we, I will ultimately end up spoiling a lot of it for you. You know, if you don't want to fucking spoil it, then don't watch any of these videos and wait till I've finished them in about 2020. But yeah, basically, so the idea is Tommy turns up in the middle of, in the middle of Muslim Shire, uh, much to fucking Big Willie's chagrin, because he obviously hates Tommy. He hasn't seen him since, or heard from him since the end of that video. And uh, and Tommy decides that he's come to sort of help and to see if he can, you know, lead this bunch of, you know, you know, Scotty, you know, pissed ginger, heroin addicted, shortbread munching subjects of the Queen to, you know, to victory against 500 million Muslims um, outside of uh, outside the walls of the city. And um, with no and with no one in the English government prepared to fucking help um, other than send Tommy. Um, and uh, one thing about Tommy, I will say, is that uh, is uh, you've heard big. Well, Tommy Robinson's voice is um, it's an amalgamation of very, very many of them. But I wanted to have a really sort of a really irritating, annoying little shit voice that would just instantly. So he's like, "Hello, my name's Tommy. Tommy Robinson. Yes. Uh, yes. Hello, big Willie. Willie, is that you? Hello, Willie. This is Tommy. Do you remember me? Yes. Yes. Tom, yes. I'm, yes. I used to. I used to know you. Yes. 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 I'm the short guy. Yes. Yes. Well, massive penis, massive penis, Big Willie, Big Willie, hello. No, it it just goes on and on and on. Imagine like sort of Alan Carr, uh, or sort of like the or that fucking what's his name, that dog from the fucking uh, from one of that insurance advert, you know. But he's got a re it just it's a really irritating non-stop, and he's basically got he's one of these char his characteristic that is his strength really is he has no real concept of the world around him. He sort of hears and sees what he wants to see, so he's completely oblivious to the fact that everyone hates him. And uh, the idea is also, one other idea with Tommy is you see he's in the Superman costume in that one. Every sort of episode, or at least every now and again, I wanted him to have a different... He's trying to sort of constantly uh, put on... Like I said, he's trying to compensate for his... Like, the fact he's only 18 inches tall. So he'll wear, like, a Napoleon outfit, then he'll be dressed as Castro, then he'll be, you know, dressed as... You know, he'll be wearing... He'll be dressed as Mussolini, and he'll have different modes of transport, like a little... Like a plant pot with a helium balloon on it that he ride, rides around like a hot air balloon. He'll have, a, a, like, a, a Segway made out of a roller skate that he's got an electric motor on. There'll be a cat that he's put a saddle on. Various different ways for him to try and, you know, create the illusion that he's some sort of leader. And the idea is, and uh, in terms of actually writing the story, I haven't got like a fully linear story yet. I have no idea how it would end, but I've got plenty of material to work with once I finally get to the point where I, I can, I mean, like I said, by the time, I don't know how long that's going to be. Um, but I would like, if there's someone out there who is who thinks they would be able to make a tune for a sort of Celtic or Scottish folk song, you know, a bit upbeat, um, that I could, that I could, uh, you, you know, I would love to, hear from you i can pay you literally nothing um uh but i you'll have my respect and um you won't really and the other thing is i need i'd like to have a sort of logo like a muslim shire titles uh which i can't be bothered to do um because that involved that actually involves design so if anyone out there would like to help me out with that one um other than that um that's pretty much where we stand at the moment so it's going to be softly softly catchy monkey it's going to take it's going to take time but I'm determined to do this because, and if I've, I, you know, I, I may very well get to a point where I can't be bothered. Um, 
and I just end up ask, trying to beg someone else to do it. But this is where I'm going with this. I want to do this. I'm determined now to do this because it's potentially, if I can get it even close to what I want it to be, um, it probably will be one of the greatest things I've ever produced in terms of you know anything I've written. Um, however, the problem is when I think of when I'm trying to write something, my brain sort of forgets the concept of logistics and what is actually possible. Um, you know, it forgets what I'm capable of doing compared to what I want to do because obviously what I want to do is always far too fucking elaborate for me to be able to pull off, and um, then I end up being disappointed and not being able to do it. But I'm going to try it with this one because I think there's a good, there's a good lot of material to work with, and it's something that could be quite, could be very funny. And it's going to get as it, as it goes on, it's going to progress. So that's the idea. You know, Muk Muslim Shire is uh, is where we're going. That's my, you know, attempt. Uh, that's my first animation by Dick Coughlin. And uh, yeah, it's going, I'm going to try and do that. Yeah, and so that's how it's going to work. Um, where we go, for what happens next, I don't know. But basically, you've seen what I've got so far, and I will be trying my best to sort of progress. And uh, like I said, this channel, it's going to be a, prog uh, a more... To sh this is more to show you the work in progress of how I get from somewhere, writing something, and how I end up putting it on here. And watching me, you know, A, watching me do two things. One, you know, write and progress and create the story surrounding it, create the characters, which is something I'm used to doing and something I'm good at, versus me learning how to fucking draw and learning how to fucking animate, which is something I'm not any good at. And to see sort of like the process for it. And maybe inspire you to fucking sit there and maybe possibly uh, go, you yeah, know, all right. So, other than that, 30-minute video, yeah. I might edit this, I don't know, I can't be asked. This is Richard Dick Coughlin here on Dick Toons, and... Uh, I haven't got a fucking catchphrase for this one. Um, welcome to Dicktoon. Population, you. That's actually awful, but I'm going to keep it on. I'll see you later. Um, I'll arcade anew.